Today I'm going to show you how I made this fantasy tower model display for less than five dollars. Starting off I'm going to use this shadow box uh, picture frame and some dollar store foam core and to get things going. Now the hex display I picked up at Michael's in the 99 cent bin and the foam core came from the dollar store and cost me $1.25. Now because of how deep the shadow box is, I wanted to raise up what would be ground level a little bit, so tracing out the exterior of the hex onto some foam core, I then measured the width of the siding and marked out an area that I was going to cut out to fit the interior. Now the foam core itself is roughly one quarter inch thick, so cutting a few of these hexes to fit the inside will raise up the floor a little bit to give us a shallow working depth, but still have enough room to make it look like a recessed area. Once I've got this first one cut out, I'm going to go ahead and off camera cut out another two. And then I'm going to use some wood glue to fix two of them down in place. Now they were a little bit more snug than I originally wanted, but fortunately foam is a little bit pliable, so I was able to kind of force them into place. Now the last one, I took the paper off of both sides because I wanted a little bit more of a kind of working surface to play with once I started gluing things down. And now using the rest of this foam board, I'm going to cut it into some one centimeter by one and a half centimeter bricks. And we're going to do that in three, two, one, and BAM! Okay, so this should be enough bricks to do the tower that I'm planning, as well as a whole lot of other projects in the future. Using a sharpie, I decided to just kind of roughly mark out where the tower was going to go, just that I had kind of a baseline to work with and wasn't going to be guessing at the placement of the bricks or any of the angles. Once that's done, we're going to begin placing out some bricks. And I also cut some smaller bricks that are one centimeter by one centimeter to serve as corner pieces. Now I'm gluing this first layer in individually just so that I have a little bit more control over the placement of the ground layer. Once that was done, I began placing the rest of the bricks just by painting a line of glue and then placing the bricks in place. Now you can't really see it from this angle, but the bricks were very easy to texture using a fairly simple method. I took a few rocks and some uh, small aquarium pebbles and put them into a tin along with a handful of bricks and just shook the crap out of them until they had the rough texturing that I wanted. And then I repeated the process like a dozen more times for the rest of the bricks. This gives them a nice weathered appearance and makes them look like handcrafted stone bricks. Well, at least they will once we paint them. Now 
Now before we get much farther, I'm going to cut out a few floor tiles using some leftover uh, kind of a cardboard box from a Games Workshop miniature. And I'm cutting these squares out to be uh, two centimeters by two centimeters just to give them a little bit of a smaller space. Now I'm gluing these down with the glossy side up so that the glue kind of soaks into the cardboard backing and really adheres to the foam. leaving a little bit of space in between each of the tiles will give me some room to kind of paint an under layer in between them. Now I've used this method in the past attempting it with a couple of different mediums of glue. I tried it once with hot glue and while that does work you don't really have a whole lot of working time to correct any mistakes and white PVA doesn't really glue that well and kind of curls the edges. Wood glue seems to work pretty darn well though. Once that's done I'm going to use some popsicle sticks that I bought at the dollar store for $1.25. Uh, Buck 25 gets you a pack of a hundred, gives you a whole lot of stuff to work with for a lot of crafts. And I'm just using these to make a quick simple door frame. I cut the two lower pieces to be a little bit shorter than where the top of the bricks were so that I could put a single piece over the top and to serve as the top of the door frame as well as support some of the bricks for the next layer. Now that I've reached this height, it's time to start making supports for what's going to be a second floor. Now I've cut out a couple of these little uh, coffee sticks which I picked up at Starbucks when I had a cup of coffee one morning and they work really nicely to just kind of fit in between the bricks. Now I do end up kind of chipping away a little bit of the wood just so that they'd fit a little bit more snug but once the next layer of bricks is applied they are solid in place and once the glue dries they won't go anywhere. Now this side of the wall I wanted to be kind of a ruined, destroyed uh, section, so some of the bricks are just kind of haphazardly placed in kind of a random fashion to show wear, tear, and a little bit of destruction. Using a model, I do a quick check to see if it's at the height that I want, and since it was, we're going to move on to painting the ground layer outside the tower with some wood glue, and then using some mixed grit sand, we will coat that area. And I'm doing this now to give the rest of the tower a little bit of time to dry before we get on to the next few steps. Now looking back, I should have placed a piece of wood down to be the uh, floor piece of the door frame, but eh, live and learn. Now we're going to use some Artist Loft Gray, and this is going to be the base coating of all of the bricks. Looking back, I should have used a much larger brush to kind of make this go a little bit quicker, but this had the added benefit of letting me have enough control to get all of the little crevices and really help solidify the build with a lot of shadow and detail inside and in between all of the bricks. Now an important thing to know is when you're using wood glue like I've been doing, once it dries, it does not dry clear. So you're going to have a kind of yellowish blob of glue visible anywhere where the glue kind of seeped out. So on those areas I'm doing a double layer of paint just to make sure that they're not noticeable and easily disguised. Now 
Now I'm being a little haphazard with painting around the base and it's getting on the sand, but I'm also planning on painting the sand layer. So if you don't want to end up having to paint the sand, be a little bit cautious when painting around it. Now while the bricks are drying, we're going to use some Mars Black from the Artist Loft series to paint over all of these floor tiles, as well as in the crevices between them, to kind of give them a nice, dark base coat. Now I'm going to use some raw sienna to paint over all of the dirt. Now looking back, I actually did this a little bit backwards. I should have done some raw or burnt umber to uh, give it a much darker base hue. Now that the Mars Black is dry, I'm doing a quick second coat just to make sure that none of the print on the box is visible through the paint layers. And using a little bit of uh, burnt umber, I'm painting a couple of areas on the model for the wood effect. And then following up a dry brush on the bricks using neutral gray. This will really help to bring out a lot of the details from the texturing that occurred. Now this might seem a little bright, but it dries a lot more faded. So to give a little bit more of a highlight, we're doing a very, very light dry brush using titanium white. And then following it up with a medium to heavy dry brush on the floor tiles. And then we'll do another one later to create a kind of marble effect on the floor. Using a few extra bricks, I'm gonna create a couple of small rubble piles to place inside. Nothing too crazy like the rubble paste we've done in the past, just a few piles of bricks here and there. Almost like someone might be trying to repair the tower, or there's just a couple of piles of bricks laying around. Using a couple of more coffee stirrers, I'm making the floor piece for what's left of the second floor. And using a lighter and a little bit of fire, we're going to create the effect and appearance of some damage. Now this is a ladder that I made using a coffee stick and some toothpicks and I'm doing a quick coating of Agrax Earthshade to give it a wooden weathered effect. And then we'll do the same on the floor section here. Now we're going to use the same technique we used on the rest of the stonework to paint these little rubble piles. Now I really like the Artist Loft paints because they dry pretty quick. Uh, once I paint down the uh, first layer, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes, and then I can do the next layer of dry brushing. Speaking of dry brushing, we're going to use some burnt umber to dry brush all of the sand on the outside. And then touch up the interior door frame with the burnt umber as well. Now we're going to go back to the neutral gray and the titanium white. Now this will really help bring out a kind of marbled effect, dry brushing it as a second layer onto the floor piece. Now we're going to do a light dry brush of burnt sienna and follow it up with a dry brush of parchment just to give a little bit of definition to all the little pebbles. Now I had a couple of these creeping vines from Games Workshop and I decided to put one kind of wrapped around and kind of growing on the side of the tower. Now these are flexible, but be a little bit cautious. They do snap and break if you bend them a little bit too harshly. Now if that happens, you can fix that by doing a dab of hot glue to kind of bridge the gap in the broken section. Now I've base coated the vines with parchment and then followed it up with a all over coat of contrast paint wildwood. 
I really like how the wild wood turned out on this. With the parchment underlayer, it kind of gives a nice weathered old wood look. Like these vines have been growing for quite some time and just kind of bring out the aged appearance of the tower. Now using some deep green, I'm going to go ahead and paint all of the leaves on the vine. And here we are with the finished piece. All right, this was an interesting piece to put together and I really enjoyed making something that can kind of showcase what you can do with inexpensive materials. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see you next episode.